Hello, this is a presentation on the structure and function of nucleic acids. It's completed by Bryce McCourt and Vicki Van Duzy. We are students in Concepts of Biochemistry at the College of Science, Engineering, and Technology from Grand Canyon University. Our professor is Dr. Karma Cook, and this assignment is due December 8th of 2021. Deoxyribonucleic acid is also known as DNA. DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. DNA molecules are tightly packed due to their size and the size of the cells in which they are located. DNA is composed of nucleotides that are made of phosphate groups, five carbon sugars, also known as pentose sugars, and nitrogenous bases, including adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. It's interesting to note that adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine also pairs with cytosine. DNA exists as a double helix. The nucleotides link together to form a chain. The two strands of DNA run in opposite directions and these strands are held together by hydrogen bonding between nitrogenous bases. So it kind of looks like a ladder. Phosphate and sugar groups alternate to form the backbone of DNA. DNA is so important to every organism because DNA encodes the instruction manual for life, according to Mention and Lodge. DNA's instructions are how an organism grows, lives, and reproduces. In the cell, DNA molecules are tightly packed into chromosomes. In order to function, these tightly packed molecules must unwind during replication and when they're giving instructions. DNA remains tightly packed for transfer during replication. The nitrogenous bases of DNA are ordered in specific sequences to provide biological instructions. For example, you might have a code with A, T, C, G, T, T, which would instruct for blue eyes, while A, T, C, G, C, T instructs for brown eyes. A gene is a sequence of DNA that provides instructions for synthesizing proteins. These genes can vary in length between 1,000 bases to 1 million bases in humans. Only about 1% of an entire DNA sequence are genes. The remaining DNA sequence governs the timing and quantity of protein synthesis. The genome is considered to be the complete set of instructions for an organism and DNA is responsible for passing on a complete genetic information to daughter cells. Half of an organism's DNA is provided by each parent. RNA is also known as ribonucleic acid. 
and ribonucleic acid is made up of nucleotides. And these specific nucleotides are composed of a ribose sugar, nitrogenous bases, and phosphate groups. And these nitrogenous bases include cytosine, guimine, which they are complementary base pairs that will always bind together. And adenine and uracil are also complementary base pairs that will always bind together. And uracil is the nitrogenous base that actually takes the place of thymine in DNA. So instead of thymine in RNA, it is uracil. In RNA, unlike DNA, it only exists as a single strand. But special RNA viruses can actually be double-stranded, just like the DNA. And there are three fundamental types of the RNA that is used to make proteins. You first have the messenger RNA, mRNA. You have transfer RNA, known as tRNA. And ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. RNA is messenger RNA and it is transcribed from the DNA and its purpose is that it contains the genetic blueprint to make proteins that the cell needs. In eukaryotic cells, the transcribed RNA is known as pre-mRNA and it must mature to form mRNA. The pre-mRNA contains non-coding in the coding regions known as the introns and the exons. And during the pre-mRNA processing, the introns are spliced and the exons are joined together. The next type of RNA, tRNA, or transfer RNA, are known as the RNA molecules that translate the mRNA to proteins. And their primary function is to carry amino acids on their three prime acceptor sites to a ribosome complex. And the ribosomes are known to then synthesize the proteins. And they do this with the help of an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase. And this enzyme loads the appropriate amino acid onto a free tRNA to synthesize proteins from there. The amino acid on a tRNA is dependent on the messenger RNA codon. And a codon is a sequence of three nucleotides that codes for a specific amino acid. For example, AUG is a start codon. The next type of RNA, the rRNA, or the ribosomal RNA, forms the ribosomes, which are essential for protein synthesis. The ribosome contains the large and the small ribosomal subunits. And ribosomes contain exit, peptidal, and acceptor sites that binds the enzyme amino acyl tRNAs. They link amino acids together, and this creates the polypeptide sequences.
The first activity for students to help them understand DNA and RNA could be a hands-on activity of building the DNA and RNA replicas. So for example, the students could create DNA and they could use the gummy bears, licorice, and toothpicks. They would take the licorice as the double helix backbone and they could take gummy bears or even the small multicolored marshmallows and they would be their nitrogenous base pairs. And then they would put the nitrogenous base, base pairs through toothpicks and then connect that then with the licorice for the backbone. The students could then determine the mRNA strand and they could build it along with identifying the template strand and the strand that is complementary to the template strand of the DNA. And these could be color coded. For example, the pink could be cytosine, the green could be guanine. And after the students transcribe the DNA strand and create that mRNA strand, they could use translation to determine the sequence of amino acids using a chart that contains all the different codons. And students could check their work using the link below that is a transcription and translation tool. The next activity could be titled, Finish the Puzzle. And this could be a hands-on activity that gives students the opportunity to cut out little puzzle pieces of the nitrogenous base pairs. Students could create a DNA strand using the correct base pairs together. For example, they would have to put the zytosine and bind it with guanine. They would have to bind the thymine with the adenine and so forth. Students can identify the key components of a DNA strand, and they could color in the base pairs accordingly. Again, cytosine could be its own specific color. Guamine could be its own specific color. This could meet the needs of multiple learning needs for students. And using Charkoff's rule, they could then determine the percentage of the adenine, the thymine, cytosine, and guamine of a DNA strand. And Charkoff's rule would just state that the DNA molecules from a particular species will always contain the same amount of bases of the cytosine and guanine because they are complementary base pairs and it would have the same percentage of the adenine and thymine because they are also complementary base pairs. An extension lab that can be used with students once they've completed learning on DNA and RNA would include a DNA Profiling Gizmos virtual lab by Explore Learning. This virtual lab would allow students to learn how different DNA sequences can be used to identify people. It will also allow students to identify sections of DNA that are different. Students then can, can then further explore polymerase chain reaction or PCR to enlarge these DNA sections, and then use gel electrophoresis to produce different DNA profiles. When students have completed these activities, they can use their learning to create a unique DNA profiling test. Throughout the course of learning how to teach students virtually, I have learned to be very grateful for and to use these virtual lab experiences. I believe even in the classroom, these virtual labs have a great place in our education today. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation, and this is the page of our seven references. Again, thank you very much.